Hello there, and welcome back to my Lego stream. It's Tuesday morning, and I've got the morning off. Uh, I still have some overtime that, that I worked, uh, that I need to compensate for, so I figured let's build a little bit more of this beautiful Hogwarts castle. And as you can tell, it is uh, it's advancing quite nicely. We uh, did in the last uh, episode, we did the rooftops here. And I think that today we're, we're, we're going to add to the roof of the Great Hall. So first, as always, I'm going to open uh, the bags with the necessary ingredients for this step. Feel free, by the way, to add comments or reactions. I'll be able to read those. Yeah, I can definitely see some more of those roof tiles. By the way, also, um, thank you if you're watching this on YouTube. I always post this live on Facebook. But then later on, I upload the file to YouTube. And um, actually, still a, a couple of hundred people watching that. Perhaps in the background while they're doing other stuff. But I appreciate it. I also appreciate your comments and sometimes your questions. So don't feel left out because you're not watching this live. <laughs> I know that you're also watching this in the future, or at least in my future. Uh, let me close one more level here. Alrighty. Um, this looks like a step with lots of tiny details. And with the the added problem of um, these colors that are very much alike. <clears throat> so if I don't watch carefully, I may actually use the, the, wrong, the wrong bricks. That's what happened to me in the last build where I had to deconstruct part of the roof because I forgot one, or actually I, I messed up earlier on and then it gets really tricky to retrieve that one piece that you misplaced. But, well, I've learned. I like these little ornaments. These are really tiny towers. Um, very, very nice. They, add, um, they just make everything even more I don't know, castle-like, where they need to be placed on the entrance. When you see architecture like this, you wonder why we don't make any buildings like this anymore. Everything has to be square nowadays and boring, industrial. So why don't we make pretty, pretty things anymore? Well, at least we can still make them in Lego. <laughs> Second small tower. So for those of you that are watching this live on Facebook, maybe for you, the first time that you're seeing me live here, because normally I do this kind of stuff on Saturdays or on Wednesdays in the afternoon. And then of course you've got a whole different part of the world that is up. I'm here in the Netherlands. So I'm kind of in between things, depending on, on the perspective, of course. But right now, I think uh, uh, most of the people in Europe would be at work, I guess. <clears throat> oh, okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, I need seven of these. There may be some people that are still up in Australia, New Zealand. No, I'm not sure about that. And then the US usually wakes up when it's uh, well, around lunchtime, usually 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's when I get most, most of the uh, east coast of the US. Um, 
two of those gray tiles. That's the advantage of uh, putting this up on Facebook afterwards. It's not necessarily something you have to watch live. Hey, Eric. Yeah, it looks really pretty. Okay. These red bricks in the middle of the roof are really useful now because it helps me locate the place where I have to put this uh, middle part. Otherwise, you'd have to count the studs, which is also, of course, an option, but. This makes it a bit faster. Right. I wonder why we put this here. Maybe for an extra tower? Um, let's see. Two more um, at the end. It's kind of out of reach of the camera, unfortunately. I'm not going to move the camera around too much. Although I probably will need to lift it up a little bit now that we're moving. Let me see if I can move the camera upwards just a tiny little bit. Yeah, that's probably, this is somewhat better. Now you can see the entire rooftop. Okay, we've got some more of these uh, bright blue bricks that we're going to use also uh, for orientation on the rooftops. We need six of those. And then 12 of these. I, I don't like these ones because they're very sharp. They're almost like knives when you have to <laughs> press on them. They leave marks on my fingers. It's very painful. And we need 12 of those. Four. I guess that's all. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One well, the reason actually that I'm building my Lego castle right now is also to distract me from work. I'm trying to take some extra time off during this um, time of Lent which may seem contradictory because Lent is a time of sacrifice. But for me, it's actually, believe it or not, a sacrifice not to work, and to take better care of myself and allow myself to rest a little bit. And uh, to me, that is actually uh, almost a penance to not work. But it is absolutely necessary right now. I need to slow down. We've been working so hard for the past three months that it was affecting my health. And also, um, when you're uh, when you're constantly working, constantly kind of chasing deadlines, it also has a very negative effect on, at least on my creativity. You can't. You don't have the time anymore to step back and look at what you're doing and ask yourself if it's still, if you're still pursuing the right goals. And I've noticed that if I take more time off and I kind of rest my brain or focus it on things that are not work related, it gives me much more of a. I don't know. Gives gives me. A sharper, more, I don't know, gives me some, some perspective, I guess. But it is really hard because the, the, the thing that I struggled most, uh, struggled with most when I started to take more time off was this feeling of guilt, like, oh, I gotta work, there's still so much on my list. And that is indicative of the trap that I'd fallen into, because if you're constantly hunted by work, then it's not 
you have to work harder, but you've got to do something about that list and make tougher choices as to where you spend your energy. That's, um, that's what this exercise in working less is actually doing. It helps me to prioritize and also mm, be confident enough that what I do is enough. <laughs> Eric says that I should attach a GoPro to my head. Yes. <laughs> Believe it or not, I actually thought about that when I started to do this build, but I opted against it. <laughs> because I, uh, I still want to <laughs> keep some kind of <laughs> dignity here while I'm streaming. You see what I mean? My fingers are already hurting. I'll be glad if this, this step is over and we've got all the decorations on the rooftop ready. So I've been uh, streaming and recording this in somewhat higher resolution. I hope it pays off. My old a MacBook Air clearly has some trouble processing all this, but I'm still amazed that this computer is from 2011, I think, still able to do this. When I bought it, it was to write a book. So I didn't go for the fast computers, lots of CPU power. So I never thought it would be able to do you know, HD streaming using two cameras. It was also, also I think, uh, one of the merits of the group that that has dev developed eCam. Because they've been doing a terrific job. Oops. I think I... Three. See, if you don't count the studs, it's very easy to make mistakes. Hey, Teresa. There we go. This is all very symmetrical. There we go, and now. For the more visual part of it, I'm going to have the third row of these, um, what is it? Not sure what the word is. I guess these are supposed to symbolize small windows, in the, like to let the light in, not to look from. But that great hall is of course very dark if it would have any openings in the roof. So I guess that's what these are. And now the other side. I'm amazed at how much time it takes to build this castle. <laughs> I was prepared to, let me see if it's a little bit uneven here, but oh well, there's nothing I can do. I thought this would take me about a week. Instead, I've been building this since December, but I'm doing this Really slowly, I'm not in a hurry. Of course, I'm going to put this on display later, but the most important, the most fun aspect of Lego is the building itself. I got five, seven, and even when I'm done building, I still hope. Well, that's what I thought. There's going to be a little tower on top of this thing, I think. Interesting. Can't wait to, to see where this is going. Um, three of these white ones. And two of these. 
So once I'm done building the castle itself, I'd like to use LED lights and put some lights uh, behind the windows and in the various parts of the castle. Nowadays with LED you can do actually very very nice miniature lighting on these sets and it, it really elevates the build to a whole different level. The downside is that because all, all those LEDs are kind of custom made or Like there's a, there's a there are companies that are kind of figuring out wiring wiring everything to make sure that it fits these builds. Um, those LED sets are very expensive. So hopefully I'll be able to find it to get a good deal. And also I've noticed that some of these LED sets there there are different companies they're not you know related to Lego this is just something that Lego doesn't do um, it's kind of up to the various companies what kind of lighting they provide so you've got very simple lighting it's just a few lanterns on the outside and a few spotlights for some of the cheaper sets and then you've got these very intricate ones with even colored light on the inside which of course Adds a little bit more magic, I think, to the entire build. But some some overdo it. And I haven't really found the the like the perfect combination yet. Uh, let's see. Let's put this one here. So some sets are really nice for natural lighting, and then you've got some that. Are very pretty, especially in the um, basement with the blue light, and it gives it much more of a magical touch. But then they put these strange colors on the rooftops with red red dots, etc. Not a fan of that. So I haven't really found the the perfect set yet. All right. I guess these are support structures here on the roof and it will have to carry something else, not sure. Hopefully we'll get to that later. Um, 12, 5, 6, 10, 12, and 12 of these, 2, 4, Six, eight, ten, twelve. There we go. All right. This is all about the details, clearly. It's almost like cooking. You know, most of the work is in the prep. <laughs> and once you have all the ingredients chopped up, then the actual cooking process is not so hard anymore. And of course, it's not as rewarding to do all the detail stuff. So I was at the Dutch Comic Con this weekend which is uh, right now it's one of the I think it's the biggest comic-con event in the Netherlands or a few more in Amsterdam Rotterdam but this one is uh, the most popular they get the best guests and uh, of course lots of people in cosplay I was surprised to see how much Harry Potter is still a thing <laughs> you'd think that uh, with so many other franchises in in movie theaters and on social media that people would have forgotten about Harry Potter but they haven't and you do see the occasional um, Fantastic Beasts uh, cosplay most of it is still 
cosplay from the original books and movies. I think it's also because the Fantastic Beasts films are not the same phenomenon as uh, the original Harry Potter was. I like the I like the story, I like the movies, but there are no books, of course, unless you count the screenplay as a book. And somehow the characters are not as not as appealing. I don't know. Okay. Right. I think we're reaching the top of the roof here. I guess there's something really timeless about the story of kids going to a school for magic and wizardry. Something that newer generations can relate to as well, because we've all been in school. Whereas Fantastic Beasts is about a world that's more, it's more of an adult world with, with political problems, and you've got Grindelwald, it's kind of the, the, like the rise of, of the Nazis. But then in the world of Harry Potter, and it all, it's a bit more, it's grittier, it is more political. And I, I think for a younger audience that may be, you know, just less attractive than the story, kind of the classic fairy tale story of a kid that discovers that he's called for greatness and learns to use powers that he didn't know were there. And it's also very much about friendship. That in a, in a way is much more timeless. All right, we're gonna add some more roof tiles. Eight of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, eight smaller ones. This is an easy step, actually. Five, six, seven, eight. Four of these, one, two, three, four, and two of these. Okay. Oh, wow. One of the things that I really, really like about this build is that, that there are so many of these sand colored stones or bricks. It's pretty rare in the Lego world. They used to build these, they used to have these medieval sets with castles and they would have plenty of this color. But uh, just a lot of the stuff, that a lot of the sets that are out there are much more using these bright colored uh, bricks. This is a much more realistic type of building. Oh, this stone does not fit. Not sure why. Yeah. No. I'm gonna add some use some strength. I hope I don't break anything. I don't know why the What's wrong with this? Hmm. Hey, Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan. Jonathan says, I love that you're sharing your passion and evangelizing in this way. <laughs> God is in all things, so that's certainly true. And as I've explained before, you know, God is a creator. And so creativity is actually something that, at least theologically, I could link to the Holy Spirit. Spirit creator. Okay, but this stone is just, this brick does not work. I don't know what, what's wrong. It must be a little. How am I going to 
I'm gonna use so much strength here. It just won't fit. Huh, maybe problem in the cons uh, construction problem of this brick. Do I have a spare one? I don't think so. No, I don't have a spare one. I'll have to see if I can use some some force to make this fit. Let's start with. Let's just start with the one that doesn't work. So while I was walking around on uh, Comic Con, I was interviewed by a videographer, like a video journalist from a newspaper. And of course, what they usually do, they see a priest, so they think they need to ask me about uh, what the church thinks of Comic-Con. Not even the church, but what God would think of Comic-Con. And I think what, what he was hoping for was that I would say that, eh, you know, God doesn't like all these evil characters and magic and wizardry. <laughs> but I refuse to be framed like that, so... Golly, this one does not, does not work. <laughs> So I, uh, I said what I just told you. I think God is very much all about creativity. And I would even say that when we are creative, we're reflecting something of God's creativity. Can't make this work. There must be something wrong with the, the mold. The, um, the plastic here. I don't know how to solve that. Ouch. I don't want to press too much on it because I'm afraid that I'll break. Oh, there you go. Ah, okay. <laughs> to use a lot of strength. Um, I know it's not going to budge any. Oh yeah, it's even a bit crooked. I can tell. Oh well. Jonathan says, well, wouldn't God love people sharing their passion in a way that doesn't hurt others and is loving? Yeah, so it's also one of the things that I admire in, in, in one of the reasons that I go to these comic cons. It's um, the people there are very, very kind, very uh, friendly. There's a, it's, it's all about friendship. And we need events like that where people can discover how much they have in common instead of, you know, these other gatherings that are more and more frequent to, where some people try to rally us into, into opposing other people. There's a lot of people, some, some parties and people are using kind of these, these feelings of fear to gain followers and gain power, but it divides us and doesn't really help. And these comic cons, these conventions, the festivals that we go to, music also is able to do that. It, it, I think it, it is very healing for our society. Because it, it brings us together and rallies us around to things that we're excited for and it helps us to see the others as friends instead of enemies or potential threat. And so oftentimes we get labeled as being naive and being, you know, trying to escape reality and well, I don't know. I don't know what's more real, friendship or hatred. I know what's gonna last in the end. It's not going to be hatred, so I'd rather invest my time on Earth here on, on building positive relationships. And, and being positive myself as much as I can. It doesn't mean that everything is all rose-colored and good. Sometimes you have to stay, take a stand. But I'm just amazed that so many people spend the majority of their time, even on social media, just being angry and 
expressing that anger and or, or being outraged. Sometimes these algorithms on on social media are are focused on outrage. It's it's it sells. <laughs> There's one thing I've learned from Star Wars is that anger leads to the dark side. And of course there's righteous anger that can sometimes mobilize us to make changes, but it's ultimately more of a tool than a goal. All right. There we go. Look at how beautiful this is now. Jonathan says, uh, cosplayers put a lot into their costumes. Takes take some inspiration. They're very welcoming. That's true. We don't need to agree with all that others do, nor condone all their behavior to appreciate them as God's creation. Yes, well, I always say we will have to, in the end, we'll ultimately have to spend eternity together. And we, so we may, might as well try to become friends now. Saves us time. Wow. I think we're going to put a bell tower here. Hey, Ingo. The roof is indeed making some good progress. Or at least, while well, the roof is not, I'm making good progress on the roof. <laughs> This is where it all comes together. It's also now that I discover some of the uh, irregularities in the in the supporting structures. It's almost impossible, of course, with a build this complicated to. Uh, oh shoot! Yeah. I wasn't paying attention. I'm talking too much. Sorry. I'm going to undo this. Skipped one piece. Let me use a, use a knife to pry it open again or pry these off. But I don't want to damage the tiles. All right. So I'm usually very, very uh meticulous about you know, all these tiles being perfectly in place but it's also something you sometimes have to let go it's impossible to get everything perfectly straight and from a distance you won't be able to see those irregular irregularities anymore at least i hope One more. There we go. That works. Now we put a ledge in place. <laughs> there we go. What happened to the window on the right side on the courtyard? You're looking at this. That's a good question. I was wondering that myself, and then I realized that that is actually a door. Because if you look closely, you see that from the boathouse, this is where the, the students arrive, there's this path, sand-colored path that leads to the entrance here. So this is where you enter the courtyard and then this is the main entrance so then you walk here to the main hall so that's why there is no window here uh, and Teresa wants to know if this is based on a church or something like that but no this is a fantasy build this is this is the castle from the Harry Potter stories which of course in its in its uh, architecture 
is based on cathedrals and monasteries. Jonathan wants to know if I have a Lego separator. Yes, I actually had one, <laughs> and I've lost it. I don't know where it is. Okay, we do the final little whatever it is. Hi, Sean. Sean is from Atlanta, Georgia. You're up pretty early. Although I think the US has already changed from daylight saving time to summertime. Uh, we still have to do that, so I always want, <laughs> I'm always confused at whether that adds to the distance and times of hours or not. Oh, thank you, Jonathan, actually. <laughs> I, I do have it, when I said I lost it, I meant I, it's somewhere here in my house because <laughs> I have, I'm still kind of cleaning up. And uh, a lot of the Lego is in the other room on the floor because I have to put it in a, in a, a cupboard that I first need to clean out before I can put the Lego there. So I'm pretty sure it will it will show up. But the little knife works well enough to separate the Lego. All right, we put this here. Interesting. Really curious to see what this will become. Sean is getting ready for work. And Jonathan is in Boston. Oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> I hope it's not as cold anymore in Boston. I saw, I've got some friends in Boston and they had snow the other day. <laughs> like, what? All right, I gotta open some more bags here. This is cool. We're gonna we're gonna add some uh, some plants for the first time. Very nice. All right, this is a lot. In terms of tiny details, I'm gonna move the cast a little bit more in your direction because I need some space here on this side. I got a big table, and even this table is too small. some of these steps. Jonathan says, I missed your meetup the last time you were here. We had snow on Saturday. Whoa, yeah. Yeah, I've been in Boston a couple of years ago. I think three, three years ago, something like that. I was still with uh, SQPN and some of our board members lived in Boston, so. We went there in, I think around February. It was very cold. Especially the wind when you're in the harbor. So incredibly cold. interesting so many tiny little elements this is one of those steps where I have to make sure I don't sneeze because then <laughs> the Lego is going to be everywhere Ooh, tiny little tower pieces and stained glass pieces this is going to be a very intricate step which probably will require ton of concentration because this is all about tiny little details. Oh yo 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 yo. Well, the first thing we're going to do we're going to build even more tiny towers to put on these uh, 
ledges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. of these. Inga wants to know what I'm going to do with this building once it's done. I'm going to put it on display. And I have a nice location already for it. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I've got this um, dining table downstairs but since I am living here alone that is usually a table for friends and I intend to use it mostly for board games and so I'm gonna put this uh, against the wall the table against the wall and then I'm gonna place the castle on top of that table, all the way to the the edge the, of the, the edge of the table. So whenever we play board games, you can see, you can look at the castle. And I think it will be a very pretty, nice place for such a build. Because, of course, this needs to be a centerpiece of a room. It's one of the reasons that I was interested in this. Is that also, when it's finished, it's still very, very beautiful to look at. And uh, a lot of the Lego is more, you know, it's a play set. Or I, I have a lot of Lego for animation, for videos that I make. So one of my next projects for the for next week is to start working on a video um, that summarizes and explains the tritium, the Easter tritium. So I'll have to make a story about Holy Thursday and Good Friday and Holy Saturday and Easter. And for that, I use regular Lego. This is micro scale, so it's more architectural uh, Lego. For the video clips, I use the minifigure scale. So this castle does not really match with existent Lego. Micro scale Lego is something that they've been. Uh, doing more and more, but it's not really for playing. At least not kind of traditional playing with the way we used to play with Legos when we were young. Okay. Now we're going to build these right here. Oh, I can tell that there's actually something wrong with the uh, frequency of the light. So, um, I have this webcam. I can tell because there's a little bit of a shimmer over the rooftops. And uh, that is because, uh, for some reason, Logitech, I've got a Logitech webcam, uh, always r defaults back to the American value. So, um, it uses uh, the um, frequency of the American electricity. I, I'm not sure if I can change that 
while I'm streaming. Not even sure if you can tell that I, I can see it here. Um, let's see if I can change that in advanced. Yes, there we go. I'm go oh, no, no, it's set to 50. That is interesting. Now it's NTSC. So this should make it worse. Right? Camera pre preview. Hold on, let me. Oh, no, this is definitely worse. Okay. Let me change back to Paul or Pal. Okay, is this better? Mm, I can't really tell. It's somewhat darker. Logitech is not. No, it's the same. That is strange. And it's not HD. Well, I guess that's because it's slightly out of focus. Uh, it's too close to the camera. If I pull it back a little bit, it, the building will get sharper. Uh, but I don't see any difference. It's probably because the setting, it's just using the Hmm, the main setting, I guess. Frame rate and exposure. Let me change this. I think it's probably because I can't change the camera after the fact. Oh well. Oh well, there's nothing I can do about it. Logitech gaming software. Let's quit this. And it is a little bit darker now, indeed. Could also be I'm using um, software for the the webcam, which is the insert, the circular insert. What is my hair doing this morning? <laughs> it's all over the place. <laughs> uh, maybe that is interfering as well. Where's that window? The Advanced. Hold on. Oh, this may be it. Is this? No, it's not helping at all. Power line frequency. Anti flicker. Eh, no, it doesn't really work. Backlight compensation on. It's a little bit brighter. Preferences. Uh, well, anyway, I won't bore you with this. Focus auto. Uh. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll leave it on auto. Uh, LED, and yeah, that's nothing. Strange. Disabled. Yeah, it just doesn't seem to have any influence while I'm streaming. Okay. Back to where I was. I'm going to put this in between. It's kind of hard to do this. Without really seeing this clearly. So all this decoration is just on one side of the building, unfortunately. The other side is open. So you can only look at this castle from one side. But that is also the case in most of the Harry Potter movies anyway. Because of course this is, this is not a real building. They used a model for the Harry Potter movies. They did use a physical model. They didn't use CGI. Okay.
Done. Oh, we're going to build a tower. I like that. However, that is going to be even more complicated. Because I have to... Two of these. Two of these. Four of these. And four of these. Okay. It's getting harder and harder to show you what I'm doing because <laughs> the castle itself is so big. So it obfuscates the view. So this is a very weird element that will soon become, it kind of looks like a, a jet ski or something like that. But this is going to be part of the tower. What time is it? It's already noon. Whoa, time flies. Sean says, I might have to go back, get back into building Legos again. <laughs> I can recommend it. Very therapeutical. I got another one of those. Misfits. There we go. Alrighty. Okay. Let's put them on the rooftop. Mm -hmm. Wait, I think I skipped something here. Oh yeah, 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 I forgot something. I forgot one connector it has to go on top of this. Can you still see this? Yeah, it's on the left side of the of the window. There we go. Wow, okay, this is interesting as a technique. <laughs> Amazing how they are able to hold this upright. That is a technique that I didn't see coming. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Whoa. There we go. It's very solid. Not only does it have to look good, but it has to stay in place as well. Wow! Oh, I love this step. Huh! This is some very, very nifty building. N nifty technique. Two of these. Wow! Wow, this is awesome. I can't wait to see how this will turn out. There we go. This is definitely turning into some kind of a bell tower. Wow, I love it. Okay, but we're not done yet. 
We're going to do something even cooler now in terms of building technique because this they're going to fill this up with with bricks this is a virtual vertical structure that normally would be very hard to build because lego doesn't have a lot of these slanted pieces but they've been able to find a way <laughs> amazing so one Building Lego or brewing beer are both activities that have a spiritual sense, says Ingo. Because both activities take time and you can't hurry them. It's true. It's true. What I like most is while you're building, you don't really... You don't see immediately what you're doing. And it's sometimes during the last step that it all comes together. So in that sense, I think it's a nice metaphor of life as well. When you're in the middle of doing stuff, you don't always see what you're doing. And so we tend to doubt the plan. Or we wonder, is there even a plan? And then it's only much later that all of a sudden you discover, well, wait a minute, there was a plan after all. And so patience is vital. Oh, this is fascinating. Whoa. You know what? This is amazing. Huh. Unbelievable. I'm absolutely amazing. Amazed by this technique of building this tower. Check it out. Check it out. Isn't that gorgeous? It's just amazing how they did this. We're not done yet. Oh, now we're going to build the lanterns um, around the courtyard. That's what these black things are four. I'm gonna have nine. These may be replaced later by real LED lights. Well, not in this process, of course, this build, but if I ever get the uh, LED light set, I'll probably have to deconstruct this. Because this is where the LEDs would go. Ooh. All right, whoa, don't fall off the table. It's so easy to uh, lose, <laughs> lose the elements here. So, gonna make nine of these. Some fit really well and others don't. It's a bit of a mystery to me, why not? There we go. I guess if I have to add some pressure, at least they won't get loose. They won't come loose. How many do I have? Three, one more. I think I already see the Dementors as well. Okay, I'm gonna turn the castle around just to make it easier on myself. I'm 
the meantime, you can get a good view of the Great Hall. There we go. Oh, I missed one. Oh, okay, there it is. Yep, the lanterns are in place. We're going to build some trees now. That's an interesting technique. So the trees are made with these wands, <laughs> tiny <laughs> brown sticks and then these uh, three we're going to use three of these green grass elements in order to simulate trees um, okay I'm trying to figure out the best way to make them look like trees well I guess they have to just have to be a little bit irregular it's nicer so you get this uh, it's kind of blurry out of focus okay I've got I built my first tree so this is the first tree it's very simple uh, but works well enough, I think. Hmm. Wow, okay. Amazing. Okay, can I turn that around a little bit or not? Uh, it's tricky. Kind of works. I'll show you in a minute uh, what I've done. We did four trees. Okay. One, two. Three. Yep. Okay. The Lego does have prefab um, trees, but they're minifigures size so they would be way too big for this build and this these green elements are usually used for gra as for grass or just very very small foliage but they magically found a way to simulate something that looks like trees pine trees that is It's, it's quite stunning how they, the way they came up with how you place these trees, you gotta just they're little tree holders. I don't like that. I'm gonna move that around a little bit. Uh, 
Uh, it's very tricky, very difficult to. So of course, I want to. The trees are irregular, but I want to want to show the best side to the audience. That is difficult. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if this works. Oh well. For the time being, it works. I may have to tweak that later on. Where is the fourth? Tree goes here. Very good. Yep. That's actually the easiest one. I'm going to put that like this. Uh, maybe. Oh, we can turn them afterwards. That's an advantage. Well, that one looks nice. It really helps, these, these, these smaller trees. Let me show you what I've done. Turn the castle around. So we've got the lanterns here, and we've got a number of trees that make the uh, rocky foundation a little bit more lively, uh, somewhat livelier. Um, we're going to build some more trees. Two, in fact. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yep, let's build two more. Two more trees. Yeah, I guess I should just go for irregular. Looks more natural. Trees are never totally symmetrical in real life anyway. Um, okay, we're going to put some more trees on this side of the castle. Uh, oops. Well, let's first continue to build these towers. So even though the backside of the castle is not entirely complete, I still use a few elements that are also on the front side of the castle to give at least the appearance of symmetry. Not sure if what I said makes sense, but this one goes here. And this little tower is here. Very nice. Yeah. Cool. All right. Some more. Tr Let's first place the trees. Mm. Oh, actually, just right here on the bottom near the uh, Chamber of Secrets. One. Two. Very good. We're going to add some more um, of these blue studs to the Chamber of Secrets for some reason. I'm not sure why we didn't do that before. Mm. I also don't really see what the purpose is of these. That will be reviewed later, I guess. One, two. Usually this these are connectors, I guess. One. I hope I never have to take these out again because that would be almost impossible. There we go. 
done. We're almost there. Next step. Oh yes, I see. I'm gonna just add a little bit more decoration to the to the cave where the basilisk lives. I think in my last episode I was talking about an obelisk. <laughs> that is not a snake. <laughs> a basilisk. There we go. Yes, a little bit of rocky stuff. Hank Jan says it's a work of patience. It certainly is. It certainly is. Hmm. Ah, now I see why it didn't need to be symmetrical because this is going to be covering it up. Hard to put pressure on it. I'm always afraid that something else will break off when I'm pushing too much on it. Okay, I'll show you in a minute what I've done. Uh, we can do a little bit more decoration with some more trees here. This kind of suggests that we're approaching the end of the Great Hall part of the build because the trees, um, they kind of keep the trees For the last, ah, jeez, it's not good. This is not well positioned. I need to turn this. There we go. Yes. Uh, what was I saying? So, because these trees can break off prayer very easily, I think they uh, save this until the the very end. Here, one more tree. We're done with the trees. Yes. Kind of turning these things so they look more realistic. Hopefully this will do the job, I'm not sure. Right, tree number one. Yes, and the second tree, what is the nicest side of it? prettiest side is this and then um, <laughs> this I guess yeah all right and then we put that on the corner of the building clicks into place very nice yes didn't skip anything um, no okay Oh wow, we're gonna do some more. Oh, we're gonna finish the tower, which means I gotta move the camera up a little bit because otherwise you won't be able to see it. This is gonna be very, very, very tall structure. Mm hmm. Also, <laughs> this it's gonna require some patience. And some searching for the elements. Uh, yes. So this, even this tower 
has a little bit of stained glass on the inside, which will probably be hardly perceptible, but just shows the amount of detail. There's a bit, little bit of, of red, uh, transparent red here on the underside, which I assume is going to be visible through the window. Okay, this is finished. This is a very tall element. It looks a bit stupid right now, but hopefully it's all finished. It will look nice. Uh, we prove, wow, okay. We've got this element. Interesting. Purple. I think this is the first time we see this purple color. <clears throat> Another one of these on top of that. I'm pretty sure the purple, again, is just for orientation purposes. And then a green. Teresa says, my grandson from 11, 1 to 2, have a teenage room, so all his Star Wars and Star Wars Lego had to go to the, to the attic because it's Lego and Star Wars is childish, say the, uh, <laughs> the teenagers in his class. I told him that you still play with Lego, but it, that didn't help. <laughs> we'll keep it safely in the attic until he's uh, until puberty is over. It's probably a wise thing to do. Never, never sell Lego. Um, Bart is in Antwerp, and he says it, this is monk's work. Indeed, it is. Indeed, it is. You need to have the patience of a monk. Okay, we're gonna make the sides of the tower. Well, we're almost, we're almost done. Um, one, two, three, four. Okay, we're gonna do, well that's interesting. I think we don't get to see the, the transparent red tiles, as far as I can tell. I wonder why they put them in. Oh well. Oh well. At least we know that these transparent tiles are there. One, two, three, four. Um, so currently I'm building the roof of the of the upper tower. It's another nifty technique. I'm gonna make sure I take this computer with me to work. We're gonna use it for streaming later today. Alrighty. Now what we're gonna do, 
if I can show you this. Is, this is this is the center, the central column. And we're going to add four of these elements to the four sides, and then that should turn into that should magically turn into a, a tower. It's just that I don't really know. Okay. So this one goes here. Ooh, this is tricky. Yes, number one. Ah, I can see how it, how this works. I can see how this works. Look. So this is from the side. This is the upper part. It kind of fits together, and then on the other side, it forms like a, an oval shape. There we go. So now we have almost everything ready. And this is the final piece. Comes together like this. <laughs> Here we go. There you go. That's that's the tower. But of course, the tower needs a cross on top of it, which is this little green thingy. And we put that in the hole on top, and here we have a nice cross on top of the tower. And then we place we place this right here. Let me see if everything is holding together. Would you look at that? For some reason, oh, this red red stone has has budged, has has moved. Um, Oh, what's going on here? Oh, this is not correct. This is not. I need to turn this. It should be like this. Yes. I think this is it. This is it. Oh! Did you see that? Uh, oh my goodness! It's like a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I don't get this. Oh. Wait, the red. Ah, I see what I'm doing wrong. This one. Pry it loose again. This should be on the inside right here. Otherwise, I can't position this one. It has to be in an angle on top of the tower, otherwise. This is, this is the way it's supposed to be. I'll make it fit. I don't have, I don't dare to press on it too much. It's a little bit wonky. I think this is it. I think this is it. Yeah, it's not very solid. It's just holding onto one little brick, of course. There seems to be a bit of space. Yeah, I think this is. Just the way it is. It just comes off so easily. That's what I don't like. It's almost as if. I mean, this is correct. That's it. That's it. Beautiful.
We're going to build a few more towers and then we're going to place the Dementors and then we're good to go. All of a sudden the roof is coming together so quickly. Surprising. Four of these. Two of these, yes. I'm going to build two smaller towers that will go on these ledges. Step one. Yes. Step two. There we go. Step three. Step four. Step four and a half. Step five. Here we go, here we go, here we go. There we go, that's the first tower. Pretty. And uh, we will place it immediately. Well, let's first place this one here. There we go. Same thing. One, two, three, four, One here. Yes. And uh, there we go. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I love this. It's gorgeous. All right, the mentors. The dementors are soul-sucking creatures that are uh, kind of half evil but they're mostly used to imprison people that did wrong so this is a tiny little dementor it's hard to, hard to see they're all black And uh, they are used in this, was it the third Harry Potter movie? Second or the third? I think the second Harry Potter movie to protect the students. But then Harry Potter almost gets attacked by these Dementors. It's all very mysterious. And definitely one of the most creepy elements of the Harry Potter story. Pretty sure that it would would have given me nightmares as a kid. One last tower right here above the entrance. Good. These Dementors are normally floating. That's why Lego uses these transparent uh, rods to evoke that. Uh, 
and some of these can even swivel, which will enhance the idea. Uh, wait a minute, this has to be like this. I don't. I think that they made these Dementors specifically for for this build. They kind of look like monks without faces. They're very akin to the ring wraiths in um, Lord of the Rings. I wish that they uh, would make a micro scale Lord of the Rings set. Perhaps even the Shire in micro scale. How cool would that be? They did a few Lord of the Ring themed builds in the past, but it was all minifigure scale. Just didn't, I didn't really like it. So, these. Okay. They're attached to the windows. Oh, interesting. Yeah, we have the first Dementor floating around. Teresa said exactly the same Lego and Star Wars are not going to be sold. And he. Uh, <laughs> He, he, he did sell a lot of his Legos in the past, and now he bought them back. <laughs> yes. Peter is also there. Looks awesome. Thank you, Peter. Five, two, four, five. So this Dementor goes on top of the roof here. Hey Bart, have a great day. Hey Kathleen. I'm gonna add another Dementor right here. I love how they uh, kind of peek around the corners. <laughs> there we go. Got one last Dementor that also goes on the roof. Two, four, five, six. There we go. The Dementors are in place. And I think this is the end of this part of the building. That is very, very nice. All right, let, let me move this back a little bit so you can see what we've done so far. Um, yeah, move the camera towards the castle. Can I? Well, wait a minute, actually, no. I can just take the camera and uh, fly around the camera. There goes a the tower! <laughs> Good grief. Okay, let me put that back and then I'll just show you the entire build. There we go. So, what have we done so far? Let's see, this is more or less in focus. So we've got the boathouse here on the left. And then we've got the uh, courtyard, which now has the towers all in place. So we fly around and we can see the Dementors here. And you can see the beautiful tall tower. To loosen the wire, we continue our flight. You see another Dementor there. And then on the lower Hard. We can see the trees that are now in place. Just gonna put the camera there for a second. 
This is very, very pretty now. I could just turn the model a little bit. See how tall it looks from here? And this is the open part of the castle, as you can tell, with the great hall and the chamber of secrets and its entrance on the left. You can see the basilisk, you can see the decorations that we put here and some more trees. So you can imagine that this, if this is uh, lit with LED lights, it's going to look even more impressive. On this side you can see the lanterns here that are on the ledges. They go all the way around past the side of the Great Hall. So there you go, that wraps it up for uh, today's building. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this and if you see this on YouTube, thank you so much for uh, the privilege of your time. If you want to see more of my videos and podcasts, you go over to tridio.com. That's a T R I D E O.com. And I'll continue to build this uh, sometime soon. So keep an eye on my account on Facebook and on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube account as well. It's uh, Father Roderick on YouTube. Take care. Have a great day. We'll talk soon.